Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premieres of Killjoys as well as Dark Matter. Starting off with Killjoys, um, well, first thing I want to note about the fact is they changed the intro, um, which I like it. Like, I like, the, like, the, how it all looks, the design of it. It looks... The first thing that kind of came to my mind was a little comic booky, but you know, what, nevertheless, I, I like the design. It just it has a very distinct art style to it. I will honestly say I like the song to use, but it's like I do miss just you know the song from the first season. I don't know, just a little more catchier in my opinion, but still a very nice um, opening. But what I liked was the whole thing with uh, Davin at the beginning. It's like him, Johnny, as well as you know, Dutch are kind of about to go after uh, Klein, and it's kind of like, okay, what's going on here? I was like, did they rescue him already? I was like, that's kind of weird. I was like, like okay, so I was, in my mind, I was like, okay, so what's going to end up happening is we're seeing the fast forward. Now we're going to rewind a little bit, show them saving him, and this is how they got here. And, but for a quick second, I also thought like, oh, it'd be kind of interesting if what they did was they're showing us the end of the season, and then basically the rest of the season is showing us how how to get up to that point. And uh, that was just kind of something that was in the back of my mind for a little bit. I'm trying to, I I get the notion, I don't remember what, but I feel like there's some show that I've come across in a, at some point in time that's done that. I mean, one that comes to mind is Heroes, the first season. I mean, you've kind of already been leading up throughout the entire season of what's going to happen at the very end, but you know, that's its own thing, but I don't think, I I feel like there's at least one show or something that I'm thinking of that's like, oh, you know how it ends at the very beginning, but then you kind of rewind and the entire season is leading up to that, I don't know, maybe I'm remembering that wrong, I know there's some video games like that, but nevertheless, moving on talking about the episode, but um, yeah, we, like multiple things go down in this episode, we find out you know, basically Klein's experimenting on Davin. At first, I was like, okay. Like, I kind of got pieces of it right to a certain degree. It's like, okay, he wants to make, you know, Davin the perfect soldier in some war that's about to come. And technically, yeah, he wants Davin to be a soldier, but specifically he wants to make him a rank six, uh, rank six so that he's strong enough to protect Dutch. That's, you know... No matter what the circumstances is, you know, we still don't have a clear picture of who Klein is and what he, why he's doing the things he does. But it's always been a big part of him has always been looking out for Dutch, putting her through everything he's put her through because he needs her prepared for what's to come. It's like he may have been harsh to her sometimes, made her even do some very terrible things, but it seems like there is a reasoning behind it. You even have... Um, Davin taken up, you know, kind of like for uh, Klein saying like, actually Dutch, I don't think he's a bad guy because it seems like, because we still don't know about this whole situation because it seems like he's not even the top dog of Rack. It seemed like that last season, like, oh, he might be at the top that he runs Rack, but it seems like there's someone way above him, some something or someone that he fears. And so that's what he's trying to prepare Dutch for this upcoming war. He's going to, he knows he's going to need her on his side. And it, what we ended up seeing was, because sadly we see that um, what's his name, Fancy. God, I, I'm kind of I'm glad he's alive. Granted, he is uh, level six, and it does make you wonder is there a way to reverse that or not. But I was kind of sad because I was like, oh man, because I see Fancy at that little thing at the beginning. Because I was pretty quickly to be like, oh man, this is totally, totally fake. The moment Fancy popped up, then I was like, yeah, this is definitely all inside of his head. But then especially when um, him and Dutch when uh, Gat, uh, Davin. And uh, Dutch start making out kind of like the little bit of a firework kind of back reddish background behind him. But nonetheless, like, is there a way to, like, undo that, I wonder? Because I was like, because once they got fancy back later on in the episode, I was like, oh, I guess you're okay. And then they, um, Davin shot him and it's like, oh, he's a level six. But what, what I was trying to get to is the fact of the matter is it seems like the level sixes don't necessarily serve whoever he's working for. Maybe maybe they do, but it's like, I guess, certain ones. It's specifically Fancy because, you know, Klein kind of got taken away. But it seemed like Fancy dealt with all the people around him and didn't stay by his side. So I can only assume maybe he did something special with Fancy. I feel a bit, man, I, keep, I find it funny every time I say his name because I'm saying fancy, fancy, fancy. But I do feel bad for him because it's like, you know, cause we haven't seen him for a long time. It was almost like, 
the last time you saw him last season was during that whole uh, Big Joe episode. That was the last time. You know, basically when he told, was it Davin or Johnny? I can't remember. Uh, that basically every group needed an asshole and he had to be the asshole of his group. So he's always kind of by himself. So I guess that's why I was just kind of like no surprise when he kind of up and disappeared. It's just, it's like, you know, like the last time we had seen him like after that Big Joe thing was, you know, when Davin woke up at the end of season one. So I do hope there is a way to, you know, reverse that. We do end up seeing that apparently, don't even know what it is, but Davin is special because that green goo, whatever the hell it is, that basically makes the level sixes level sixes. It's not really sure what it is. Somehow it serves more than just that as a purpose. We don't know exactly what it is or exactly what its true purpose is. We've seen it used multiple ways. He ended up using, kind of ended up using it to delete any records that... Davin was even there, so it's that way, but also soldiers, it's what kind of gives them their immortality, like the moment they get shot, they instantly heal, so they're not 100% human anymore, are they, I mean, I don't know if I caught that at all, are, are they technically humans, like anyone in this show, are they technically human, I, I don't know, I mean, because it's, because this doesn't specifically take place in our, you know, like, you know, like, in an, I don't even know if it takes place in this galaxy, but it's always been, like, referred to, like, oh, yeah, this takes place in the quad, but that's about it. I don't know, it's just, that, I feel we're using the term human because I'm not really sure 100% if they are, in fact, humans. I mean, you know, they're humanoids, I guess, because, I mean, it's the same thing as me calling them Earthlings. It's like, they're not from Earth. They're, you know, if anything, they're Westerlings or something like that, which, granted, they're not even Westerlings. None of them actually are, because Dutch, Johnny, or Davin, none of them are from Westerly, but never, nevertheless, moving on. But that was kind of interesting to me, uh, and the fact is that Klein did help Davin out. Like I said, he just wanted, you know, because at First, he wanted to make Davin into the perfect soldier, you know, basically to keep Dutch safe. But it's like now he sees that that doesn't work. He actually rejects the program, whatever that gunk is, that uh, slime is. It doesn't affect Davin. Apparently, he was able to reject it because typically, you know, if someone can't handle it, it would just outright kill them. But he was able to push it back by his own force of will. So obviously, Davin's not normal. Maybe it has something to do with all those experiments that were performed on him, you know, making him into the perfect soldier. So maybe all the stuff he went through kind of made him into the perfect candidate to be a level six. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, it's a, you see him and Klein kind of join forces, which ended up leading to being one like a not funny line, but it's just kind of a standout line of him saying, like, I need you to shut up or I'm basically going to shoot you repeatedly and then I'm gonna shove my fist inside of each one of the bullet holes and Davin was just like yeah that's very oddly specific but it's just like it's he bounces back and forth I'm like he whether he can be trusted or not like it seems like he does a lot of bad stuff but it's like obviously there's a lot that we as well as a lot of stuff that Dutch doesn't know about Klein um, she's never really delved too much into him personally because I I don't think Dutch actually knows much personal stuff about him. Even after all the, that time they spent together, him training her, I don't think she really knows him that well. So it's kind of hard for her to kind of you know give any you know like information on her. It'd be kind of interesting if we actually this season got to look more at Klein's past, got to find out how he got to where he is, find out exactly where he is in all all of this, what part he's playing, who he's answering to. Because something that kept uh, something that kept popping in my head, we did kind of get a little bit of an answer to it. It's just because like because the big focus of this episode was like, hey, the whole Davin situation. What ended up coming up was like, oh hey, uh, I was like, whatever happened about the whole Westerly uh, Westerly. Uh, situation. You remember last season it got bombed and everything. So I was like, what happened with that? I was like, what about the whole rack situation? We touched on that a little bit, but it's like, how stable is the rack? Cause remember Dutch's boss, uh, that dude kind of got the longish hair. The last time we saw him, Klein was basically dragging him off, I guess, trying to pump him for information. That's the last time we've seen him. Uh, that kind of guy who works for the company, the older guy, he's the one that let Dutch and the others leave at the end of last season. So uh, I guess that's because it kind of coincides with the fact that the matter is we end up finding out the Westerly is blocked up by um, a wall. There's no one getting in and out. We don't know who lived and who survived. 
uh, that including that monk dude as well as the doctor lady who both you know along with another group of people basically opened that door and kind of took shelter so we don't know if they're alive uh, those company guys the, that specific company guy was referencing like what the population is like down in Wesley. I mean, they do plan on breaking in there uh, just because they do need to find out, you know, how their friends are doing, everyone they care about. What I found very interesting is that uh, Pre, the bartender, like he was with them. I thought it was kind of surprising. I guess, I mean, he was with them last time, but it's like, I'm just surprised he kind of went all adventuring with them. But I guess it's like he doesn't have anywhere else to go because, you know, uh, Westerly being shut down like it is, he can't go back to his bar. So I guess he's alone for the adventure. I did like the whole situation with him and Johnny kind of being undercover, like at the, uh, when they were playing the, uh, was it cards? And basically he's like, oh, your mom called. And she's like, my mom. Oh, my mom. Basically having that back and forth. And it's like, well, maybe if your mom wasn't such, uh, basically what he called a big fat loud mouth or something like that. I forgot what it was. He called her. And basically everyone it was like, whoa, everyone got super quiet. The one guy at the table was super finished. She's like, yo, don't talk about your man's mom like that. That's, that's so uncool. Apologize. You don't do that type of crap. I just love how offended he was. It's, that was just, that was kind of nice. So that, that was just kind of a funny moment. But it's like, I don't know, so, you know, obviously so many questions about so many things. Apparently that whole thing in Davin's head. Now to me, what I interpret that is apparently it's a memory. I thought basically it was Davin connecting to Klein. Basically Klein's off leading his, you know, army of like, you know, level sixes, because I was thinking, you know, obviously he's building an army of soldiers, which I guess technically he is for whatever he's doing. Maybe he's going to lead kind of a bit of a revolt or a coup against his bosses. Maybe that's what he, I don't know, he and he needs Dutch's help with it, as well as Johnny's, as well as Davin, especially because he thinks Davin's special because of uh, what happened with him rejecting the green stuff. But, um, which always, it sounds funny when saying it like that, rejecting the green stuff. But yeah, I was thinking they were super soldiers, which maybe to a certain degree they are. I mean, or maybe there's other reasons why they exist. Because maybe it's not just specifically Klein who needs level sixes. Maybe he, whoever he's answering to needs level sixes. And for what reason? And what, you know, what real part does like Dutch play in all of this? I'm so interested, especially because we, you know, Davin ended up saying like, "Oh, you've never been here before." Yet when I was looking back in that memory, it showed you were there, and it was because there was a whole thing about like, because the fact is, Klein interacted with him inside of the memory. He's like, "You shouldn't be here," because he was surprised. He says like, "I guess it's part of the process." Like everyone, like during the level six process, I guess everyone has to participate that once you get up to a certain point, but being at whatever stage Davin was at, it was too early for him to experience that. But I was thinking like, okay, like he subconsciously connected with Klein on a battlefield, but it's like, no, apparently that was a memory specifically. So it's, I don't know. And it had to be pretty recent. I mean, Johnny met out with Dutch about six years ago. So... I'd assume just because she looks somewhat the same in that memory, maybe it was more recently. I don't know. Maybe there's points in times where she's blacked out and she doesn't realize it because maybe she's under someone else's control. And, you know, every once in a while, she they kind of like snap. Essentially, not maybe literally or metaphorically, maybe they have like a special key phrase or something that they input that they make her uh, basically their sl uh, slave to kind of you know, go out, their little personal assassin that they can, uh, like, unlock and lock at any point in time, kind of, like I said, snap of the finger or keywords, whatever the case may be. We also got introduced to a, uh, another character this episode, it was her name Clara? Uh, pretty badass. I did, like, the whole uh, gun arm thing of hers. What's it called? Alice, giving it a specific name, and just how, uh, literally, Johnny's drooling all over it, just like, this is kind of like a awesome piece of hardware essentially what she's got and it basically Clara later on was kind of like yeah I don't know if I should be telling you this or not but Alice has kind of got a thing for you it does seem like they be kind of a nice match for each other you know because Johnny being 
kind of the man, like mechanical dork that he is, it seems like he really appreciates her being what she is, which is apparently a modified human, which you can be modified, but the law, you know, in the quad says only up to a certain extent. So that's kind of sad. Um, she was basically forced to get more than the preceding, you know, the the allowed amount. Like, basically, the warp device, the device, the shooting device that they needed to get to Davin was put inside of her by those people, the ones who modified her like this. So basically, you know, I was, I mean, I'm hoping we get to see more of her because I like her personality. She's very fun. She's a badass. She can handle herself. I was like, oh, like, you know, I, I know definitely we're going to see her later on because for one, she's still out there looking for revenge. Plus, she told them that she, anytime they needed help, she'd kind of come help out. So I'm very, obviously it is going to be, I'm wondering, will it be like, oh, like she is getting her revenge. Will we see that or will it be under different circumstances? She meets up with the crew. I would like it if she ended up becoming a killjoy. I don't know if that's going to be possible, but I would like to see her end up being a killjoy and joining the team or at least, you know, become a familiar face that we see from time to time or something like that. I don't know. She's very interesting. I'd like to learn a little bit more about her. We don't really, obviously, just met her, so we don't know too much about her, except, you know, kind of the hell she got put through. It kind of sucks that that shooting device was put inside of her, and every time it's used, it ends up killing her a little bit more each time. That's why Johnny was very, well, him and Dutch were very reluctant to ask her for help, because it's like, yo, you're dying from this thing. Like, we can just try and find another way, because they can't even take it out, because it's, if they tamper with it, boom. She explodes. They'll probably be be killed too because of proximity. Nevertheless, be very. I'm very interested to see where everything goes. Hopefully, get some answers. Um, I'm curious about where the company stands in all of this, as well as what is it, the nine lords. I'm. I don't know how if I missed that or not. How many actually did any actually die at season in in um. Last season when that lady did her thing, she used that weapon that basically targets people from specific bloodlines. And I could have sworn, didn't um, the doctor lady's mom die? I know Johnny told her like that live, like, oh yeah, your mom loves you. But didn't she actually die? When she, wasn't she one of the people vaporized? Or maybe I'm just remembering that wrong. I don't know. Nevertheless, I'm just curious like, to see where everyone stands in the situation. Rack, as well as... The company, as well as, you know, the nine, aren't they called the nine lords? Something like that. I'm very interested to see where they all stand. And something, too, like, this series stays, you know, for a, you know, space series. It stays pretty allocated to one specific zone, that being the quad. Makes you wonder will there ever be any points you really kind of, like, venture far, far out of the quad. I mean, maybe they could actually have, there's certain places they've been, and I'm like, oh, maybe that's a little, you know, distance away from the quad. I don't think they've really ever really been like, oh, yeah, this is like uh, nine light years away. It's, you know, something like that. I don't know. I don't think it's ever been quantified as to, like, like, you know, distances and stuff. But, um, like I said, nevertheless, I'm very interested to see uh, where everything goes next episode. And now moving on to the uh, this season premiere of Dark Matter. Picking up right exactly where last season ended off with the uh, team being captured. End up finding out what happened. Is it, is it 100% that six... Um, Ended up betraying them, and yes, I will. To anyone that doesn't know, doesn't know this, I will be referring to them by their uh, numbers because you know it's just, it's easier that way. And plus, most times that's how they refer to each other, mainly by their numbers. I, I mean, once they get to the point they start calling each other mainly by their real names, then I'll I'll force myself to switch over. But till then. They're going by their number names. But, you know, we find out that Six has been a freaking undercover cop this entire time. That's why he was the one that turned on the team. Interestingly enough, though, it wasn't something he knew the entire time. It's not like, oh, he was faking. It's like, no, he really lost his memories, too. But it wasn't until that whole situation where he was, um, you know, he came across that other undercover cop that really came out. And basically, he just essentially... It, 
he's kind of caught between like he does like everyone in the team. He's come to grow and get attached to them. Specifically five. I mean the whole like him betraying them devastated, you know, five the most because out of anyone in that team. Obviously the other person she got close to is two, but she kind of took a you know back step from two because she kind of saw the more vicious side to two, so that kind of scared her. But um you know, but other than that, the only person she really trusted the most was Six, and that just kind of broke her heart. So, but you know, in Six's mind, he's just he's on multiple levels. He's like, I'm a cop. I have to do this. You know, you know, justice. I have to do the right thing as an officer. It's my duty to make sure that justice is being served. But he's also doing this because he doesn't want Five caught up in all this or one because it's like. Yeah, at first, I was kind of like, why are they separated from everyone else? I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Out of everyone on the ship, they were the actual non-criminals. Uh, basically, we have five mainly being locked up most of the episode. But the whole thing, I really like one storyline of trying to figure out, looking more into his um, wife's murder, trying to get information on it. And the moment he was like, oh, can I talk to the, that one security guard witness? Because basically seeing all the... The evidence against three being the one that killed his wife is very thin. It's only be his name was only brought up because there was one witness and it was a security guard. And I was like, okay, this security guard miraculously died or something some time ago. And it's like, oh no, he miraculously died uh, literally last night. It's like that's not suspicious. Uh, granted, you know, one picked up on that pretty quickly, but it's just like. Everywhere you turned, it seemed like everyone was so quick to try and get him to let things go. I mean, he tried to be there for his friends. He's like, oh, asking his lawyer to look out for five. But basically, his lawyer is like, oh, yeah, you need to kind of distance yourself. Uh, basically, we can go to a cer uh, plastic surgeon and get, your get you your old face back. And it'll help you when you're standing in front of the board. Now, I don't know how to interpret that guy who's, quote, unquote, says he's uh, a good friend of... One, Derek's uh, dad, and, like he worked for him for like 30 years and he said like, oh, moment I found out you were going to take over the company. I made a promise to myself that I'd look out for your best interest. Essentially, it's like, no, you're, you're obviously looking out for you. You, I feel like he, he's trying to put one in a position where it's like, oh, he's crazy and unreliable and I can take, you know, he's currently been running the company this whole entire time that one's been gone. So I don't know, maybe he kind of got absorbed into power like there's so much going on behind the scenes. Basically, the whole like setting it up so it's like three was the number one suspect. I feel like that was the point. I bet you that information is what led uh, one, Derek, to get on the ship in the first place. So it's just kind of like they're caught up in someone's game. And it's like, I don't like they don't know. We don't know like what game that is because apparently they haven't even been like, uh, tried for what whatever you know crimes are being charged for they're just kind of being like st stuck there indefinitely until like you know because it seems like someone else has got some you know parts to play they're just kind of pawns in this uh little chess game uh so many different things going on we end up have uh you know, being who he is, which granted, uh, interestingly enough, it seems only five and one are the only ones that know about six being a cop. The others don't realize that yet. But what I really like is that things aren't as simple as just like, oh, I was trying to do the right thing. Obviously, he's losing five a little bit, but he's OK with that because as long as she can go off and have a happy life, he's kind of fine with that. But interestingly enough, he ends up finding out that being a cop isn't all, like, you know, it's not as straightforward as he thought. It would be. He thought it was like, oh, I just do my job, kind of, you know, kind of in a way save the world from evil. Just like get rid of, you know, evil, you know, justice. It's this uh, bright, shining beacon of light to lead, you know, pave the pathway in front to uh, get rid of evil. Like, obviously, in a metaphorical sense, it's what I'm trying to say. That's not exactly how he sees it, but... Uh, that's how I'm laying it out. But basically, it's a little bit dirtier than he expected because he ends up finding out that basically his job, like his, his bosses knew about the bombs. I um, knew, knew about the explosion that basically killed 10,000 people that he became responsible for, which apparently that whole thing went down, like him killing everyone around him. I was because I was like, OK, so what was that whole thing about? I was like, let's not forget you killed a lot of people. You killed like your uh, co-conspirators 
And it's like, oh, it's because he literally had a breakdown. I mean, granted, he did try to kill himself afterwards. I mean, sadly, he, he killed three of the people who didn't have anything to do with it. Two of them were, like, the other three were being manipulated like you, but he just lost his mind because he was just like, you know, he's an undercover cop, and it's just like, I guess he felt responsible for it because he set that in motion. It's like, the whole point was trying to stop this group, but he ended up helping them kill, like, a whole bunch of people. He ends up, you know, but, like, finding out also that your bosses knew about it, you know. I feel like that's going to be what kind of brings Six back to the team is, like, him realizing that the side he on, the side he's on isn't necessarily 100% good. That he honestly would be better off going back with the people labeled as criminals because, you know, they are better people. I mean, maybe not who they were, but who they are now. And technically, when you break it down, like, from what we learned from Season 1, maybe that was me misinterpreting that, but is it uh, 4 actually the leader of the group? It seemed like this whole thing was his idea because it, they were like, oh, he basically, like, uh, 2 brought it up to him in that flashback that uh, 5 was having. Basically, when she was kind of being brought in front of him, it was like, oh, what do we do with this girl? And basically, 2 turned to 4 and was like, okay, like... It's your decision. He's like, let's keep the kid around. So, I mean, obviously, she ended up thanking him at one point back then for it. I mean, obviously, when she kind of was just back in present day, responding to him, being like, oh, thank you. He's like, for what? She's just for everything. So, because he ended up uh, telling her that, you know, you know, she could, he basically made it so she could stay. Why I'm saying that is. It makes me wonder, like, how this whole group came together. And I feel like if he was the boss back then, maybe he played a key role in all of that. Uh, but that's that's getting all into that. Well, many different things bouncing around. Uh, we also have the three mains. We have uh, two, three, and four, basically, in general population. Uh, unfortunately for three, he's making the wrong kinds of friends because he's running into people he's known from the past who obviously he doesn't remember, who he owes a lot of money to. Uh, there's that lady, I forgot, I didn't catch her name. She's the one that, um, two ended up fighting. The one that's pretty good, I kind of don't trust her just because of how well trained she is. It doesn't seem like anyone else in that prison is well trained like she is, but maybe just because she's special. I hope she's not something like somebody planted, planted her there so she helps out the group. You know, because it does seem like two is reluctantly trusting her just because it's like, oh, she might have a way out of here. So I hope it doesn't become a situation where it's like, oh, two puts her trust in her and just ends up getting betrayed. I guess it's it's kind of sad. This series is kind of a reminder of like, you know, when you don't have memories, you are very trusting of people. And that trust can easily, you know, be dashed and broken. I mean, I guess, you know, I feel like out of anyone, the least trustworthy, like the people who are very reluctant to trust, maybe four and three. Definitely three, but maybe a little bit of four, too. But, um... Ended up finding, you know, you know, two ended up learning a little bit more about their situation. And like I said, she that the lady that she's kind of befriended a little bit might know a way out of her. Very curious to know more about her. Like I said, a little suspicious of her for now, but we'll just have to wait and see on that situation. Three, I love this whole situation because he basically, this episode, trying to squirm his way out of uh, being in his situation. Because it seems like he's kind of being treated like crap. I mean, obviously... By other prisoners, but you know the guards are kind of jerks at this prison too. They kind of do what they want to. Uh, remember that lady was like, "Okay, you don't have to shock me," but he's like, "That guard was like, of course I do. It's the only thing I look forward to on a day to day basis." So essentially, basically, after talking to a guy in the infirmary, uh, three ends up going like, "Okay, I can just hurt myself, and then I can just spend time in the infirmary. You know, spend time away from general population." I just stay in there for a while, get some good food in, t t in me until uh, my, whatever my problem is. He, I mean, obviously he like burned his hand. What's sad is he ended up finding out was like, oh yeah, the guy that hold, like suggested this plan for you, yeah, he actually got sent off to like a, I guess essentially a psych ward because they found out like, oh yeah, he's hurting himself just so he could be here in the infirmary. They pumping him full of drugs, and the three was like, no, no, it's okay. Especially considering the fact is that the nurse wasn't there. Uh, like she was the first time he came through, so it's like, can't even get that enjoyment out of it. There was l literally all the benefits that he found are completely gone. Then we have four kind of scoping the whole situation out, finding out about 
how the uh, prison really keeps its inmates in check. Essentially, there's a sound wave that goes off that kind of like disorientates people. It literally, literally can knock everyone out. Obviously, the officers have like uh, the guards have specific earpieces to kind of block it. So he also comes across one of the guys, one of uh, maybe. I, I think there's at least one other guy who kind of runs things in this prison, but he met one of them, and basically he's told, like, him and the others have to keep their crap in check. If he causes trouble, there will be trouble for them, so now they have to basically work together, obviously, to uh, get out of the one prison that is considered unescapable, so... Very interesting episode, and then we finally got like two notes at the end. Apparently, from the what we're getting from the warden, apparently the warden or of that prison or whatever is answering to somebody else because somebody, like I brought it up earlier, somebody wants uh, the team for whatever reason. Particularly at the end of the episode, someone picks up five. They're like, "Oh yeah, she won't be caught up, brought up on any charges if she cooperates with us." About what? We don't know. Then we have the whole situation with one at the end being shot by Jace. Bullets to the chest as well as the head. Don't know how to interpret that as, you know, obviously it's looking like he's dead. I don't feel like they're going to kill him off like that. I'd like to assume and be like, okay, he's not dead. What's most likely is either it's a clone or there's just something else going on here. Um, I like the thing, you know, just because of what, what's been presented to us so far that it's actually a clone. But we'll just have to wait to see next week to see what it's all about. So many damn questions that need to be answered. It's just like, you know. Also, we got a little taste of the Android. Which something I want to really quickly go over. It's something because I... The entire time through season one never crossed anyone's mind to give the Android a name. She still doesn't actually have a name. She's still just referred to as the Android. Robot you know, by three, but, you know, just Android, it's just something that kind of bounces the back of my mind, I did like the fact is that she is being a bit of, she's kind of almost like a teenager, she's being very rebellious, so, like, you do this, do that, like, you know, I have rights over you, so you do this, do that, it's like, no, I don't want to, you could tell me to do that, but I don't want to do it, so I'm not going to do it, type of thing, so, I don't know, very interested to see a little bit more of her, I do like, I did like as the season progressed, she got a little, essentially a little more human with every episode, um, so hopefully we get some answers to some of these questions, but, you know, like I said, I get the feeling like this whole thing was put in motion, ranging from, uh, one's wife's murder, and then him thinking it was three, like, this whole group coming together was no accident. I mean, I think with the exception of five, but five does seem special. We did find out a little bit more about her past, finding out her real name's Emily, her parents died, being an orphan, living on the streets for the past four or five years. So, I don't know. They w wanted her specifically. So, I don't know whether it's... Because, remember, this whole thing, she got put on that ship in the first place with her friend. They snuck aboard because she stole something from somebody that she shouldn't have. We haven't seen that thing for a while now. That Whatever that... I forgot what it was, but... It kind of looked like a little bit like a card that kind of had parts cut out of it, like, you know, like kind of uh, oval shapes, like very thin oval shapes in it. Like, we haven't seen that in a while, so maybe whatever it is is connected to that. It's just like I said, so many questions in both this show as well as uh, Killjoys. And speaking of which, just like Killjoys, it's got a new intro. Obviously, nothing, you know big, I mean, drastically different, I mean, it's quite different, but, you know, uh, still a short intro, I mean, it still looks nice, I didn't have a problem with the first one, but, um, yeah, I'm very interested to see, like, how this whole situation plays, I I'm very curious to see, like, like I said, because currently the only ones that know about Six's betrayal are one, yeah, one and five. Maybe two and three and four actually do know because it just it just never came up in conversation during the episode. Maybe they'll think like, oh yeah, six, he was somewhere else. I'd like to see what happens when a group comes together. Maybe one and five will lie about it. like, yeah, six, he's not. No, there's just other circumstances. We were just at each other's throat, but that's not the case. Or he was manipulated. I don't know. I'm very interested to see where that goes and see how this all plays out. Um 
see if they will actually be able to do the impossible and escape a prison that no one's ever been able to escape before. So and That's really all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.